Hello there, lovely folks of YouTube. Ren here with special guest. Um, so I want to talk about a little subject. This is kind of a fun video. So please, no, no button my face, please. Um, <laughs> so anyway, in my tradition, we're considered a teaching tradition. And part of being a tra teaching tradition not only means that our requirements for what we teach people who are new to, their new to the tradition are pretty stringent, but we also teach people who are in the tradition how to teach people in the tradition. So um, as part of our training, we are expected to teach the subjects we have learned to other people. Now, one of the first things that I did, of course, is covering a subject that I was well versed in, but other people in my grove were not, and that was herbology, which is the magical study of um, herbs. I created this little brief course um, for the grove back in the day, the early days of COVID, when we were only doing stuff over Zoom. Um, so this is really just a real brief descriptive primer, and I picked 13 herbs that you probably already have in your kitchen right now. So, I've decided to share this class with you, the general public of YouTube as well. Oh my gosh, Hades, you are so crazy. Sorry, little, this little guy is just like super, super needy right now. Anyway, so this is my Herbology 101 class that I shared with the members of my group. I'm now sharing it with you. 13 witchy herbs you probably already have in your kitchen. So, number one, sage. Now, when I talk about sage, I'm not talking about white sage or those sage bundles that you can get at fucking Five Below and Home Goods and all that kind of bullshit these days. I'm talking about actual culinary garden sage, Salvia officinarum. That is the sage that we use in the kitchen, the sage that is in your Thanksgiving stuffing here in the United States. Um, this is the sage that I'm talking about. This is no cultural appropriation associated with this sage. This is the sage that you buy at the grocery store. So sage is, um, my little mnemonic that I give for this herb is the clearing house. This is the herb that will help with clear thinking and just kind of clear out any uh, negativity that you may have. Um, this herb is associated with Jupiter and air. Um, wisdom is typically associated with this as well, which ties in with that clear thinking as well. Jupiter is sort of expansive. Air, of course, is referring to mental acuity, mental powers. This herb kind of draws on both of those. Um, it's a great herb for any kind of mental cleansing that you may need to do. Clearing out negativity, clearing out negative thought patterns. Sage is a good herb for that. Um, I have little snippets for most of these herbs where any herb that was listed in Culpepper, I'll give us a little snippet on that one. So if you're not familiar with Culpepper's herbal is probably one of the most famous herbals of the, um, you know, English mid late middle ages. And uh, Culpepper says that this herb protects against the biting of serpents. So we can also see that as sort of like, if we're talking about metaphysical venomous serpents, then it's sort of protecting you against those snakes in your brain. So that's that's a really good use for this first age, in my opinion. All right, herb number two, rosemary. Rosemary is the multi-tool. <laughs> just, yeah. I give a little mnemonic with each of these, you may have noticed, um, just to kind of help you kind of summarize what this herb is for and how it can be used. Rosemary is the multi-tool. So rosemary is um, sort of an all-purpose, it may not be the best tool for the job, but you can use it for so many things that if you have nothing else, a lot of the time you can kind of shoehorn rosemary into it. Okay, buddy. Um, yeah, so uh, rosemary has correspondences with sun, uh, particularly the sun in uh, the, the zodiac of Aries and fire. Um, it's really good for protection and purification. Uh, multiple sources listed as being good for enhancing memory. It can be used for um, remembering and honoring the deceased, so you can use that on your Samhain altars. Um, Culpepper lists it as um, something that we're burning it corrects the air, so it's good for clearing that miasma or that negative negativity in the air, which can also assist with healing properties, so it has that. Like, like I said, 
it's the multi-tool. You can think of many, many applications for Rosemary. Uh, one of the other things they mentioned about Rosemary in frequent sources is that it can be used as a substitute for frankincense. So, if you have a recipe that calls for frankincense and you don't have any because it's expensive and not always easy to find, you can substitute rosemary that you can get from your grocery store. That's fine. So, herb number three, basil. I've talked about this herb. I made a video on this one. There's a couple herbs in here that I've made videos on that I'm sure you can find more information if you are interested, but this is just for a quick summary. Basil is poison control. It is our poison control center. So basil is correspondences with Mars and Scorpio. Basil is considered to be good for drawing out poison. Culpepper says that it like draws like. He was of the opinion that basil itself was poisonous and caused madness and therefore using the principles of homeopathy, it's, it's good for removing those things as well. So it's good for exorcism of any shit you don't need in your life. People will love to list this as a love herb, which doesn't make a lot of sense to me. Um, I'm not sure. Hmm. I have suspicions as to where that started with, and it's people who aren't really doing a lot of deep diving into the herbs. It is good for relationship magic, but only if you're having a lot of arguments and there's a lot of tension in the relationship and you need to get rid of that. That's where basil really shines. Um, if you have a happy-go-lucky relationship, you don't need basil. But if you're if you're having a tense discussion over something and you can't seem to meet eye to eye on this topic, basil is good for that. So that's where you can use it in relationship magic. But yes, remember poison control. If you have something poisonous in your life, basil's good for getting rid of it for drawing it out. So. Number four, black pepper. There's not a whole lot of information out there on black pepper in a lot of the classical sources, um, but I always see black pepper as just sort of like out with the bad. Black pepper is a banishing herb. It's an exorcism herb. It is um, has correspondences with, Mar with Mars and fire. It's good for breaking hexes, stopping malocchio. If you need to make just a really quick black salt, in order to protect yourself or protect an area that you live in, you can literally just mix salt and pepper. Salt and black pepper mixed together, you got black salt. You don't have to go through all the, you can if you want to go through all the ritual of getting the ashes or graveyard dirt or all the other things that go into black salt. But if you want just a real quick and easy black salt, salt and pepper, you're done. There you go, black pepper. Number five, mint. So if black pepper is out with the bad, mint is in with the good. Mint is associated with Venus and with water, um, sometimes air. It's protective, it's good for home blessings, it's very calming herb. It's used a lot in dream magic and aiding in sleep because of that calming nature that it has to it. Um, very much used for invoking pleasure and success. Um, because it's an herb of Venus, Culpepper warned that it stirs up venery, so it can be used in love magic as well. I know I've talked about this when I talked about mint as well, but again, summarizing, mint is in with the good. It's helping to enhance pleasurable aspects of your life and just bringing a very calm, soothing happiness into your life. So, herb number six. your brain, won't it? Happy, happy, joy, joy, happy, happy, joy, joy. So time also has correspondences with Venus and water. It is good for attracting good health and healing. Um, good spirits are being brought into the area with time. Um, when you wear it, it gives you energy and courage. It can improve your attraction to others. If you're wearing it during work, it helps to sort of ease the stress of work um, and keep keeps you with a light heart, even when you're being surrounded by heavy burdens. It's, um, yeah, prevents nightmares. Like, thyme is a really great herb for just, 
Ah, bringing the good things in and changing your perspective to see the good in situations that might not always be good, like when you're at work. You know, sometimes you need that little bit of time just to kind of be like, okay, I can get through this. So time is really great for that. Uh, and it's delicious. I use it a lot. So number seven, are we on seven? Seven, bay leaf. Bay leaf is a real popular one in witchcraft. It's really easy to use. Uh, my mnemonic for bay leaf is touched by the gods. This is an herb that has correspondence with sun, Leo, fire, um, very widely used in divination and prophecy. Um, there's a whole, like, that whole thing that you see all over the internet where literally you can write an affirmation on the bay leaf and burn it in order to send it out into the universe. Um, the, um, I'm trying to think of the name. I keep thinking Pythia, which is the, yeah. But anyway, um, boy, my brain is really just, like, completely error 404 right now. Give me a second. The priestesses of Apollo um, at Delphi were said to chew bay leaves in order to help uh, with their prophecies. So obviously there's that component there. Um, helps with protection against negativity and evil. Uh, one of the things that Culpepper says is that neither witch nor devil, thunder nor lightning will hurt a man in the place where a bay tree is. So good protective herb, good for divination, um, good for sort of bringing things into the universe manifestation touched by the gods. Yeah, bay leaf. Number eight. Um, this is kind of a twofer. Marjoram or oregano. Those two herbs are very closely related. They're not the same plant, but they're very closely re related. Uh, marjoram is Oreganum majorana. Oregano is Oreganum vulgare. They have very different uses in cooking, but magically, energetically, they're pretty functionally identical. So if you have oregano, but not marjoram, if you have marjoram, but not oregano, you can use them interchangeably. I have both personally because they're used in two very different aspects of cooking. I use them both. Marjoram more than oregano. Marjoram has a sweeter flavor, but I'm not talking about cooking here. Don't get sidetracked. I'm talking about magic. So marjoram or oregano. All good things is the mnemonic I have for that one. Uh, it has correspondences with mercury, air, and Aries. That's sort of like, you know, motivational thing to it. Uh, strengthens love. It's used to bless weddings and other unions between people. Um, brings peace and happiness to the soul. It, um, this is your long-term relationship herb, okay? Improves mood, helps to aid against depression, so you can add it to anything that's sort of to help you get out of that depressive funk that you have. Um, Culpepper calls it an excellent remedy for the brain, so again, helps against depression. So on the magical side, if you're severely depressed, see your doctor. You want to do other things besides just use herbs. But if you have just the just a touch of the blues, marjoram or oregano will help with that. All right, going in a very different tact for our next one. Number nine, chili pepper or red pepper. Fuck you. That's what this herbs and anonic is. Fuck you. This is the um, Mars and Fire herb par excellence. This is the herb that literally says fuck you magically. Um, used for hex breaking, particularly if you want to send some sort of retribution back to the person who gave you the hex in the first place, chili pepper. Um, separation magic, if you want to get things really fuck out of your life. This is uh, widely used in hot foot powder. I'm recording, sorry. Uh, <laughs> One of my kids came out to ask me a question. <laughs> the look on his face. Okay, um, but yes, if you want to get things out of your life, chili pepper. Um, I see this on the internet as being something for lust magic. Mm, no. Um, this is great for lust magic if you want to have that really terrible, awful fight with who you're in a relationship with and that phenomenal makeup sex afterwards. Um, not what I would recommend, but if that's what you want, you do you. All right, number 10, cinnamon. Uh, my mnemonic for this one is winning. <laughs> cinnamon is also a fire herb, but it's sun and fire rather than Mars and fire. 
so has that sort of elevation to it. it raises spiritual vibrations, um, it's protective, it enhances your psychic ability, brings good fortune into your life. This is the herb you want to use for lust magic if you want to have a, um, a productive relationship rather than the on and off. Super hot but also very toxic relationship. Cinnamon is really good for that. All right, number 11. So for this one, nutmeg. Nutmeg, my mnemonic for this is Lucky Charm. Nutmeg is governed by the planet Jupiter uh, and the element of fire. So it has that energizing, but with that sort of expansion of brightness that Jupiter brings out, this is really good for luck and good fortune. Um, it's said that you can, if you can find a whole nutmeg, which is literally like a nut, you can carry that for luck. Um, a whole nutmeg is also good for that long-term relationship magic. So there's a um, little folklore that says as long as you have a whole nutmeg in your kitchen, then your marriage will stay whole. So I've always had whole nutmeg in my kitchen. My parents have always had whole nutmeg in theirs. I gave one as a gift to my friend uh, on their wedding. <laughs> and uh, yeah, we're all still married. So and it's been like, hmm, well, uh, two decades in my case, five decades in my parents' case, and it'll be two decades this year in the case of my friends that I gave the, the nutmeg to. So, I mean, who's to argue with that evidence, right? <laughs> nutmeg is also good for prosperity magic. So a lot of the time, even if you just have ground nutmeg, um, like anointing a candle with oil and rolling it in the ground nutmeg, particularly if it's a green candle, is a real quick and easy prosperity money spell for you. I've used nutmeg oil, like nutmeg infused oil for anointing for um, prosperity as well. Nutmeg is really great for that prosperity and luck magic and just, you know, really, really just making you lucky, honestly. Yeah. All right. Number 12. This is not, this is something you can definitely get at the grocery store, but it's not a typical herb that's used in cooking or baking. Chamomile. Chamomile. Uh, here comes the sun is my little mnemonic for this one. Chamomile is very solar in its uh, correspondences. Uh, you can get chamomile tea in the grocery store, in little tea bags, and yeah, guess what? You can still use that in magic too. So it still counts. You can still get it at the grocery store. Chamomile is um, very good for healing. It brings in a lot of solar healing energies. Um, it's used for dream work um, that um, sort of brings sort of that peace of mind which is what helps you get to sleep and then brings in those good dreams, sort of illuminating the dreamscape, if you can think of it that way. Um, and then of course, success and luck. Um, it's used in a lot of that, like you'll hear of people who are going to go gambling will wash their hands with the chamomile tea beforehand. So success, luck, all of those things that the sun is associated with, chamomile can be used in those aspects. All right, our last one. This is another one that it's kind of a stretch, but it is available in a lot of culinary. You may not be able to get it at all of your grocery stores. Maybe, it depends on how bougie your grocery store is. We're talking lavender. Lavender is used in tea, it's used in cooking, and of course it's used in magic. Our nononic for lavender, Mercury Direct. This plant is all mercury. Um, has some correspondences with air and Virgo, but I mean Mercury. Mercury, Mercury is what I always think of when I think of this plant. Good for communication, good for um, serenity, clear thinking, new beginnings, um, sort of bringing new things into your life. Um, Culpepper, again, you know, like literally says that this plant, lavender, carries Mercury's effects very potently. It is all mercury. So if you're looking for clear thinking, for communication, um, for the calm and serenity of mind, yeah, lavender is where you want to go for that one. So yeah, that's it. That's all 13, 13 herbs. You probably have them in your kitchen cupboard. And if not, you can very easily find them at a grocery store or in the case of lavender, no one's going to look at you twice if you buy lavender at like a herb store or anything like that. They're not going to think, ooh, that person's a witch. They're going to think, ooh, that person's making some really fancy breads. <laughs> so even if you're trying to keep your witchcraft on the down low, this is a fabulous list of herbs that can cover pretty much anything you need to do magically. 
and uh, yeah, you don't need to go um, to the crazy, you know, ridiculous, you know, where you're buying the like little bag of herbs for five dollars that's this big, like, you know, um, the resources are out there. Witchcraft is a, witchcraft is a practice of the poor, and you shouldn't be restricted from it because you don't have any money. It's very easy to get the supplies you need at very basic stores like the dollar store. A lot of these things you can probably find at the dollar store. So, um, don't feel like you have to spend a fortune on your witchcraft. It's all right there in your cupboard. All right. So, I hope this is a helpful resource to you. I hope this video finds you well, and I will see you again soon.